So who remembers the 1982 Scott Baio and Willie Ames movie, Zapped? You know, it's that movie where Scott Baio gets magic powers and he uses them to make girls' skirts fly up. Anyways, I don't really hear a lot of people talking about this movie. I feel like people have either forgotten it or they're trying to forget it. Now, the reason why I remember this movie so well is it's one of those movies that it seems like they played it every other week on KTLA Channel 5. Tonight's feature, Zapped, will continue in just a moment. It was Zapped, Dirt Bike Kid, Pippi Longstocking, and The Bad News Bears. I mean, there was probably others, but it really feels like it was just those four movies over and over again. Now, the reason why I wanted to cover this movie is there's a few locations in it that I was familiar with that actually remind me of my childhood, and so I thought it would be kind of fun to cover those locations. And so today, we're going to be checking out filming locations for the 1982 movie, Zapped. So, let's go see what we can find. So this right here is the opening shot of the movie. The camera then slowly pans down, and once we see the front entrance of the school, the title of the movie appears on screen. So this is John Marshall High School. And if you're at all interested in filming locations, you might already know about this place because a lot of stuff has been filmed here. Uh, Pretty in Pink, Nightmare on Elm Street, Grease, the Van Halen Hot for Teacher music video, a whole bunch of different TV shows, and this was the school from Zapped. And a lot of scenes were filmed inside of this school. Now, the problem is it's really hard to get inside of John Marshall High School because since so much stuff has been filmed here, they're kind of hip to the fact that people want to get inside and check it out. Probably not for Zapped, but maybe for other stuff. But because of that, it's really difficult to get inside of this school. However, there is a lot of stuff that was filmed outside of John Marshall High School that we can still match up. Now, in case you've never seen Zapped, this is the story of high school science nerd Barney, who for some reason is best friends with Peyton, the bad boy. And one day Peyton pours a little bit of beer into one of Barney's science experiments. Barney, not knowing this, feeds it to the lab rat. This gives the rat magic powers and the rat forces Barney's arm to knock over some of the beakers, causing an explosion. Oh boy. And of course, after the explosion, Barney now has magic powers, also referred to as telekinesis. Uh, just on the other side of the main entrance, this is where Peyton and Barney are walking when Bernadette walks up and starts bugging Barney that she wants to interview him for the school newspaper. So right over here is where Jane and her friends are talking when Peyton and Barney come walking down the steps right here, and Peyton decides that he's gonna try and make a date with Jane. So Jane and Peyton and Barney are walking right here in front of the school, and Peyton thinks he's finally starting to get somewhere with Jane, and that's when Robert pulls up right here in front of the school all the way from T. Winkle College and messes everything up for Peyton. <laughs> Now, if we come around to the back side of the building, this window right here leads into Barney's science lab. And when he's in there practicing, trying to figure out how to use his powers, Bernadette walks up and peeks through the window and she sees Barney using his magic. Now, right here is where Bernadette was standing. And as you can see, it still looks pretty similar. After Bernadette walks away, Peyton walks up and peeks through the window and he sees Barney using his magic powers. And now everybody is finding out about Barney's secret. And it's time for the big game, the Penguins versus the Tigers. And of course, this is when Barney gets to use his new magic powers to make him a good baseball player and finally get to play a little bit. Now this right behind me is the Crystal Springs baseball field in Griffith Park. And this is where that game is played.
So this is the Mineral Wells picnic area in Griffith Park. Now this is where Barney's walking after the baseball game when a car comes down the road right here full of kids from the rival school and they've got Emerson Sucks painted on the side of their car. They pull up to Barney and they start taunting him and the two guys in the car even pull their pants down. And this of course upsets Barney and he again uses his magic powers to float the guys out of the car and then over here into the picnic area and they are hovering right over a couple that's sitting at one of these picnic tables eating watermelon. And then Barney places the two guys with their pants down in a tree right over the couple that's trying to enjoy their fruit. And I've walked around this area trying to find the tree that Barney places them in. Unfortunately, it seems like all or most of the trees have been changed. I can't find that tree. However, if we look right over here, we can see this brick wall. That can be seen and then on the other side of it is where the cars are parked. And you'll notice that on the right side, the cars are parked parallel to the wall. And then on the left side, the cars are parked head in facing the wall. And then on the left side also, there's a metal railing on top of the wall. And that matches up exactly with what we see in the movie. And that would mean that it was somewhere right here in this area where that tree was and where the picnic table was. But even the picnic tables have been changed and they're in different areas. But because of the wall, we can tell that it was right here in this area. And then one last thing that I just noticed is you can see a bathroom in the distance beyond Scott Bayo, and it's almost impossible to see now because of all these trees over here. But if we zoom in, you can just barely see the building right there in between the trees. We see the outside of Barney's science building again when Coach Dexter catches Principal Coolidge crawling out the window. And these look like they might be the very same windows. Now I'm not sure, but they definitely look like it. As Principal Coolidge is walking away, he stops and says something to Dexter, and you see a building behind him, and that's this one across from Barney's science lab. And that brings us to Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. But in the zapped world, this was Magic Land. And they start by taking a group photo right here in front of the fountain at the front of the park, something that a lot of guests do when they first get here to Magic Mountain. Now, for whatever reason, Peyton didn't care about being in the photo, so he's the one taking it. I just noticed that the water was a lot higher back then. We then see some of the actors riding on the typical rides that they would use whenever filming at Magic Mountain. Like one of my favorites, Colossus, which has since been turned into Twisted Colossus. We also see them on the Log Jammer, another one of my personal favorites, which has since been torn down and replaced with Full Throttle. We see Barney and Bernadette walking through the games area, and not too much has changed here, except for maybe some of the games and the prizes. Now this entire time, Peyton and Robert have been competing and betting on the games. They then decide to head out to the parking lot and chug some beers. And it's kind of hard to tell exactly where they were because the parking lot has changed so much. But it was somewhere right in this area where they're having the drinking contest. And when the camera is looking this way, you can see this section of Colossus. Again, now Twisted Colossus. And then once they get out of the car and the camera is pointing this way, you can see these off in the distance behind them. So they're now back inside the park, and the deal is they're gonna see who can ride the crazy barrels the most times without throwing up. Now right here is where they were standing, and you can see it looks a little bit different, but when Peyton's talking to Jane, in the background you can see the bumper cars, or the sand blasters as they were called, and that's this building. And then right over here, somewhere in this area where Crazanity now is, this is where the Crazy Barrels used to be. And of course, Peyton asked Barney to help him out and make Robert's barrel spin just a little bit faster. And so Robert loses, he runs around the side of the ride and throws up somewhere right over here. And when he's running over there, you can see some stairs 
Those were the stairs leading up to the old monorail station that used to be right up here. So Barney and Peyton then take the girls to get something to eat at this fine eating establishment, currently called Twisted Witches. Now I'm not sure what it was called back in 1982, but in my day this was Colossal Sausage. It was always something Colossus themed. Now the inside hasn't changed too much. The color scheme's a little different, but for the most part it looks the same. Barney and Peyton are standing right here looking out this window when they notice a couple of guys from T. Winkle College moving in on their ladies. Now the layout of this eating area has changed quite a bit since then, but you can still match things up with the Magic Moments Theater building right across the way. Now right over here is where Peyton was when he gets approached by Robert you can see some stuff has changed over here and there's also a gate around this entire area. So not able to get in there and get the exact same angles like when Robert's walking into the parking lot, but this is the spot. So this next scene is probably the entire reason why I like this movie. Uh, I'm currently standing in a shopping center on Ventura Boulevard in Encino, nestled in between Newcastle Avenue and Zelza Avenue. And I've shown this shopping center in a few of my videos because I used to actually live just a couple of blocks that way. And I don't know why, but this is one of those places that whenever I pass by, I get a lot of nostalgia. Just these memories come flooding back and for some reason, I feel a connection to this shopping center. And so right over there used to be a warehouse video and music where we used to go to rent movies and I would also buy cassette tapes. And then right next to it was a CNR clothing store. We never went there. Uh, and then over here in the corner used to be a LA Tronics. It was an electronic store that we would go to sometimes to buy Nintendo games. And then right next to that was a big five sporting goods. And so this next scene was filmed in this shopping center. And I'm so thankful to Zap for capturing this area and showing what it looked like in the 80s. Although most of the businesses that I just talked about aren't shown in the movie, it still shows some of the buildings across the street and it shows what this area looked like in the 80s because a lot of the stuff has changed here and watching the movie reminds me of what it looked like when I was a kid. Now, as I already mentioned, where the BevMo now is, this used to be the warehouse video and music store. But before that, it was Big Ben's Records, which became the warehouse. And I do have a slight memory of when it was Big Ben's, but I mostly remember it being the warehouse. So we see Barney and Bernadette riding their bikes through the parking lot on the side of Big Ben's. And behind them, you can see a building, which is still there, but of course it's blocked by these trees now. And one thing that I noticed in the movie that I found kind of interesting is at the time, there was no business over here on this side of the building. Now my entire life living here, this was always a kosher market and I think it still is, but in 1982, there was no business here. So Barney and Bernadette are riding their bikes through the parking lot. They then make a left and turn onto the sidewalk and they're now riding in front of the record store and they then stop their bikes right in front of the front doors and they're about to go inside and do some shopping. And that's when Peyton pulls up and parks his car right in front of the record store and behind him, across the street, you can see the pizza cookery, which has been here my entire life, and it just closed maybe a year ago. You can also see that this shopping center across the street used to be a gas station. I remember this always being a shopping center, but I guess in 1982, it was a gas station. And you can also see a reflection in the window of Big Ben's for a 76 gas station, which my entire life, it was a 76 gas station. It's now a Chevron. And you can also see the reflection of a Ralph's grocery store, which is right across the street from the 76 gas station. And so Barney tells Bernadette to go ahead and go inside because he knows that Peyton probably has some shady stuff to talk to him about. And Peyton walks up and Barney tells him he's got a date for the prom. He's gonna be going with Bernadette. And Peyton doesn't give a crap about that. Instead, he tells Barney that he got invited to this frat party tonight and there's gonna be gambling and he wants Barney to come so they can basically steal all the money. And Barney says he would rather go out with Bernadette tonight and Peyton says, well, just bring her along. And so they go inside and Bernadette's in there doing some record shopping 
And you can see at the end of the aisle that she's standing at, there's a box that says Big Ben's Records on it, which is pretty cool. And I would love to show you where they were standing, but the inside of this building looks completely different. They've actually split it into two. It's now BevMo and the Dollar Tree. And so there's now a wall pretty much where Bernadette would have been standing. But you can see the address is still the same. You see this address behind them when they're standing in front of the building. But so anyways, Barney tells Bernadette the plan. She gets upset, throws the record down, and then comes back outside. And when she does, you now get a pretty good shot of the time to buy liquor store, which this has been here my entire life. Nothing has changed on the liquor store. And so they're standing here in front of the record store and Bernadette's lecturing Barney because she wants him to use his powers for good, not evil. So Bernadette gets on her bike and rides off towards the time to buy liquor store and Barney uses his powers to stop her from riding away. And you see a business that appears to be called Carl's. But when I lived here, that's where LA Tronics was. But I guess before LA Tronics, it was a business called Carl's. So Barney stops using his powers and Bernadette rides away and Barney and Peyton continue to stand in front of the record store. And you would think at this point, Barney would tell Peyton, you know what, Bernadette doesn't like the idea. I'm sorry, I can't help you out. But instead- I'll pick you up at eight, okay? Yeah, okay. All right. And another thing that I've noticed that's really cool is even though they've remodeled these buildings, it still has the same brick that it had back in 1982. Now I had said that none of the businesses that I talked about being here when I was a kid were here at the time of filming. However, there's two other signs that you can see a reflection of in the window of the record store. You can see the sign for Big Ben's Records and you can also see a sign for CNR Clothing. So I guess CNR was here at the time. Now this is probably one of the funniest scenes in the movie. Barney's trying to leave for prom and he gets stopped by his mom and a couple of priests because his mom thinks that he's possessed by the devil. And so in order to leave the house, Barney makes his ventriloquist doll float down the stairs and chase after the priest. It's pretty hilarious. Or maybe you prefer the scene where the coach is having a dream that he's riding bikes with Albert Einstein and he's being chased by his wife who's firing a sausage gun at him. Or maybe you prefer the scene where Barney makes his model spaceship float around the room and then we see inside the model and see the bootleg Star Trek crew that supposedly lives inside of the model. So Barney gets to the prom and he patches things up with Bernadette. And then after a quick scuffle between Peyton and Robert and Barney getting hit in the head with a watermelon, he then for no reason causes there to be a windstorm inside of the prom, making all of the girls' dresses fly up and their tops come off. And then we've just got a bunch of naked people running around the prom. And that's the climax of the movie. And then Barney gets hit in the head a second time and a bra lands on his face. And then when Barney wakes up, we find out that supposedly he's lost all of his powers. <laughs> tricky, tricky. So Barney and Bernadette come out of the dance, down these steps, and then they walk right over here. And the way that we know that this is where they were standing is by this little window right here. And so when they get to right about here, Barney once again uses his magic powers to put a blue orb around them. They then shoot straight up into the sky and fly over the city. And our movie comes to an end. And if you haven't seen Zapped, you're probably going to want to go watch it now. All right, that is going to do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.